Hello Minecrafters, Arctic Shark Games here coming at you with another Minecraft Bedrock Edition command tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on the play sound command and all about how to play sounds at players. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and throw a like on it as well as subscribe to the channel over here at Arctic Shark Games. If you're stuck on a command, jump into that Shark Commander's Discord. There'll be a link in the description as well as in the comments. And make sure you turn your sound up all the way for this video. We're going to be messing with sounds at first. And then at the end, there's going to be an advanced portion of the video where we actually mess with distorting sounds and changing how loud they are and all that kind of fun stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it and we'll show you guys the first basic set of play sound command here. So forward slash play sound can be used in the chat bar as well as it can be tossed into a normal command block here. So the basic setup of play sound is you got the syntax for forward slash play sound and then you have a sound type which in my case is mob.gas.charge and then you have a target which is at p for me meaning the closest player to the command block so if we click that there it's going to play a sound at us and it's going to successfully say played sound mob gas dot charge to arctic shark games and basically you can choose a whole bunch of different sounds based on their categories. I will throw a link in the description as well here for a link to the actual web page there with a list of working sounds for Bedrock Edition. But there's lots of different categories. You saw that first one was in the mob doc category. This is the random doc category where I'm playing a level up. And then we're playing a glass sound there, random dot glass. And then this one here is the game dot player category. So this is the sound you guys are probably familiar with there when you die unfortunately and then this one here is the same regular um, gas charge command again so after you've selected yourself a target you want to make sure that the target is in fact a player and not an entity entities cannot hear sounds from play sound so this um, mob shrieker there will not actually hear um, my sounds coming from the command block the same as a sheep walking around won't hear those commands if we try to play a sound at an entity it's going to say selector must be a player type so if you guys are running into that error there it's because you need to select at p at s at a some type of player now the next step in the play sound command is totally optional there um, there's a few different portions of syntax I'd like to go through in the next portion of the video but I want to give you guys a couple of examples here of different sounds that you can do and sort of how you can tie these sounds into real world things so what I have going on here is I'm gonna load in some structures for us and as the structures load in we're gonna play some sounds Make sure you guys go ahead and like and subscribe here to Arctic Shark Games if you're finding this video helpful. And then again, go ahead and jump in that Shark Commander's Discord if you guys are interested in kind of chatting about other types of commands with a bunch of command guys like us. Alright, so that's basically the basic portion of play sound. Anything at this point is optional. So the next portion of the sound is the origin set of coordinates. So you can see I've highlighted in green there a set of tildes and you can use a set of tildes to do the command which then this command would happen at the player or you can do a set of actual XYZ coordinates. Any way that you can normally type in coordinates is how you choose your origin. And then we're going to move on to the advanced portion of the play sound here. The first portion of the play sound that pops up next for you is going to be volume. So you can see after I chose a set of specific coordinates here for the sound to origin to originate at, I have a green one here, and that is the volume portion of the command. Now volume equals basically the distance that the sound can be heard. So one on the volume is a default, so when you're running the basic set of play sound, it will always choose one, and one represents 16 blocks. So we're talking about chunk distance here, not block volume. So every time you type a one in, it equals 16. So if we were to type the volume level of two into this command block here, it would be heard for 32 blocks away from the actual origin. So we're going to multiply our volume by 16 blocks if we're greater than one. If we're less than 1, meaning that we're typing in a value between 0.01 .01 and actual 1, this is going to make the sound quieter, but it's still going to use the default distance of 16 blocks. So if I was to type in 0 0.05, um, that would be a very quiet sound. If I type in 0.5, it would be half as loud, but it'd still be heard for 16 blocks. As far as I know, there's no actual maximum distance that the sound can be heard from. I went and typed in a whole bunch of nines in there and it still played the sound at me so as far as I know there's really not a maximum amount of chunks that the sound can be heard from. 
So we're going to go ahead and mess around a little bit first here with the actual volume. So we're going to go into this here is just a normal play sound command, but it's executed at this armor stand. So we're going to use his position here as our origin so it can be a lot easier for us to go ahead and calculate our distance. So now for an example here, we're going to go after our origin set of coordinates and we're just going to use a normal volume level of 1. So we're not really messing with the volume level too much here. We're just going to mess with how far it goes. So I have a line of redstone here set up to activate that command block for us and I kind of measured out some distances so you can see when we're standing right next to this command block here and we just have a distance of like two or something like that the command is normal loudness and as we walk further away it slightly decreases the volume level to a point where we're right on the edge of our 16. So our volume level equals one here. We're right on the edge of that 16 and it gets very faint. But once we come out here into 17, we don't hear anything at all. Now you can see that this command output says fail to execute play sound as test because I didn't actually receive a sound. So no one received the sound when I was outside of the actual radius here, which was only of one. So now the next set of 16 blocks would put us way over here at 32 blocks away from the sound origin, which basically would be a sound volume value of 2. So if we go ahead and we fly over here, we can change the volume value to 2 in that first section there. And then you can see that if I come over into this second category here, I'll still be able to hear that sound. We're in the middle of our volume value 2, and then we're coming over here to the edge of it. It starts to be very faint, and then if we get outside of it, it's not going to play for us. If we flew way over here, you know, we're not going to hear any sounds or anything like that. Now, if you typed in a volume value of, say, 999, that would be heard for 999 times 16 blocks away. 999 chunks away is what that means. Now let's mess with turning the volume value to less than 1. So if we turn the volume value to half of 1 right here, you can see that even though we're still standing only 2 blocks away from this sound origin, it's very quiet. And then as we walk further away, it's going to get quieter. So now we have <clears throat> an option here where we can pretty much change this range from anything between 0, 1, like this, and an unlimited amount above 1, but everything between 0 0.01 and a solid 1 actually makes the sound quieter and is still going to be heard for 16 blocks. So if we can go ahead and turn this on to 0 0.5 and then we go, on ahead and we go ahead and mess with the next portion here. This is actually called pitch. Actually, it would probably be easier for us if we leave volume value on 1. And then our next value here, pitch value, we're going to put that on 1. Now, the pitch value of 1 is your default pitch. So when we press this, the sound's going to be normal. Now, the pitch value can, again, be between 0 0.01, and it can be between 256 is what I found for an upper limit. If you turn it to 257, it just changes back to being a default value of 1. The effective range, meaning that you can actually hear the changes that the pitch is making, is more of between like 0 0.03 and 5, in my opinion. It does still affect the sound, but I can't really tell the difference above 5 or below 0 0.03. So now this is a normal gas sound. Let's just listen to this one more time. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and change the pitch value to below 1. So we're going to do 0 0.5. So that's a half of a pitch. You guys hear what that's doing to the sound there? That really messes with the sound there. And then we'll go even lower just to be drastic about it. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it is in fact playing an incredibly low rumble of that sound. And then if we change the pitch value to then be above 1, we'll go ahead and go to 1.5. Oh, it's still rumbling actually. Wait for that rumble to end. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but some of those low pitch values below 1 are incredibly ominous and they take an awful long time to play the sound because it's stretched across such a long pitch. So anyways, now we have a pitch value of 1.5. You can hear that really sounds like a quick squeak now. 
So it's really changing how fast this sound is playing for us. So let's put this on 5, a pitch value of 5 that is. Now it's just like a quick little mouse squeak type of thing. So with all our existing play sound files that we have, we can really distort sounds to all kinds of different things if you use your imagination and you use the pitch portion of the command. Now the pitch will play the same at any distance based on what you selected on the volume value. So we're going to go ahead and take our pitch away and we're going to put it back on 1 so that we're not really messing with the pitch at all. And we're going to take our volume level and we're going to put that on 1. And then we're going to go ahead and put our minimum volume level on 1 as well. So now we have three 1s after our origin set of coordinates. So this here you can see the third 1, this green 1 is what I'm talking about here, volume minimum. So now volume minimum is very confusing. Um, it kind of messes with the command a little bit, and I don't actually recommend to use this portion of the command. If you stick around to the end here, I'll show you how to kind of fix the problems that we're about to run into. But volume minimum, basically, if the distance is greater than the volume value, then the sound will actually be louder after the volume value. So that's a very confusing sentence right there. But basically, if my number is larger so if I have a volume value of 1 when inside of my area I have a if I have a volume minimum of 1 but my volume value is half of 1 that means when you get past the 16 blocks it's actually gonna be louder than it is inside the 16 blocks so let's go over here and demonstrate that for a second for you here this is very confusing um, all right so we're gonna go ahead and put our volume value on 1 and then we're going to put our, our sorry, volume value is on half and our minimum value is on one. Those two confuse me a lot there. So we're going to have half of our value and then we have a minimum at one. So what that's going to do now is it's going to play the sound pretty quiet for us. And then we're going to get outside of our 16 block range that we're normally selecting with the default volume value. And we're going to play a sound at us again and it's actually louder. So you can notice when I'm standing here pretty quiet stand here louder that's contrary to how volume should logically work right so that's not really something that I recommend doing um, in order to fix this what I've done actually is I've changed it to just use some target selectors and I ran two separate play commands so basically we're just running these two in a chain and we're making sure that only one sound plays at players in the first area, the first 16 blocks, and then a second sound plays in the second area past 17 blocks. So basically how we're doing that here is I'm still asking you to get the armor stand, so you can kind of ignore that there, and then we're doing forward slash play sound, mob dot gas charge again, and this time I'm just selecting a player within 16 blocks, and then we're going to go ahead and do no volume minimum. We're doing a volume value and a pitch value, but we're not doing a minimum value at all. And then over here, we're going to play a, another command that is past the 17 blocks. So you can see it's play sound, mob.gas charge, at P with a radius minimum. RM means radius minimum. And that means anyone who's 17 blocks or further from the origin point would then hear the sound that is quieter. So I chose a half a volume value and a half a minimum volume value. So that's pretty confusing there, but we're going to connect this here now to our buttons. And you can see that when we're inside the first area we're getting a normal gas charge and then we come outside of the area and instead of having it increase in volume which makes absolutely no sense it'll actually decrease in volume for you if you run a chain command and then if you want it to be even quieter you could do another command that selects people that would say a minimum of 33 blocks out here which would be then in the third area and then you can you know play the sound at a lower value so say I wanted to do a third command here that was exactly the same I would basically just run this same type of command and then I would change my how loud it is to let's say quarter of our volume value so we'll go 0 0.25 and then we want to change our radius minimum to be even further away so now what we could do here is when we fly way out here past this area here we should be hearing a very quiet sound so that's even quieter than it would have been in the middle and even quieter than it would have been here. That's kind of a tough difference to hear, but if you guys mess with this on your own test worlds, you can kind of hear the difference in sounds a little bit easier. 
In any case, if you guys found this video helpful, please go ahead and throw a like on it and subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games on YouTube. It helps the channel out a ton. And if you want to stick around for one extra minute here, I can go ahead and mess around and show you guys how this actual structure load works here with the subscribe buttons. So we'll go ahead and I just have a fill command that will erase these for us. And we'll just make sure that this circuit's in fact turned off. And while that powers off for us, we'll go ahead and break a little bit of this wall so we can see behind the letter S as everything loads in for us. Ooh. Fell in a little hole there. Anyways, let's go ahead and break this here. Alright, so basically what we have going on here is my lever just, you know, hides itself and connects underground with some redstone. And then I have a couple of repeaters set up on a delay just like this before the actual first structure load. And then I'm running a play sound command just by running the redstone over it. And it's, you know, just a different sound for each one. So the first one was random level up. And then it runs into a structure block that's set on load mode that I previously had set up to just load the letter S of the word subscribe. And then I did a tick delay of 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 ticks or so. I believe it's 12 or 15 depending on the sound I did between each structure. And then basically the redstone just jugs along and loads each structure and sound slowly. So if we could take a lever, we'll steal that and we'll come over here and we'll put a letter down and you can see how this kind of goes around there hits that command block hits that structure block and just keeps loading different sounds for us there if you guys go ahead and throw 500 likes on this video i will make a whole dedicated video to all the different sounds that are available on bedrock edition thank you guys for watching and keep commanding